Let's talk about the universal living wage. Let's talk about how people get things, how they get money, food, sex, other things. I've heard this notion of a universal living wage, or income actually, and my understanding is that there are a group of people that that are suggesting, hey, we're all human critters out here trying to make it. Some of us have a bunch of stuff, and and some of us have none, so it, it seems that there's so much wealth in the world There's enough that everybody can have some stuff. Let's just spread it all around. And so I I think about it and I think, well, you know, that kind of, it kind of makes sense that if if there's somebody that's having six meals a day and throwing their food away because they have more than they they need and there's somebody else that's starving, like my my heartstrings are kind of like, hey, maybe, maybe we should try to help that person get the food. And then, and then I think about it and I say, well, we should help. And then I'm thinking about the words that I'm using. I'm like, well, well, what would we do if, if the one person, Bill, is the one that has a bunch of food and, and, and the other person, Bob, doesn't have any? What would we do to get the, the money from Bill to Bob? Or the, not the money, the, the food in this case. Or, and I guess this would. It would translate to money, uh, because I I think that's what people are saying, is they're not wanting to actually give an egg or a piece of bread. They're they're wanting to give money uh, in hopes that people will buy bread with it. And and, and here's what what I can't get over, and I'm stumbling, is is what is it that we could do? Well, I I guess we could walk up to Bill and say, hey, Bill, Bob over here doesn't have any food. You want to give him some of yours? And if Bill says, gosh, that's a nifty idea. As a matter of fact, would you mind taking this over to him? It looks like we have our our whole problem solved. And as a do-gooder, which is what I consider myself to be, hey, I've had a good day. But but what if I walk up to Bob and I say, hey, um, what about some of your food going over here to Bill? And and Bob says, no, no, I've I've worked hard for it. Don't know Bill. Don't don't really want to help him. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and keep this. Well, then when I think back to what we kind of started with, of what are we going to do to get get the, the food for Bill? The only thing I guess we could do is if we've asked nicely, we've tried it peacefully, we could move to violence. And, and we could either say, um, I don't know, I'll kill you if you don't give me the money, give me the food so that I can take it over to Bob. Or, or if you don't give me the money right now, I'm going to send you a nasty letter and then another nasty letter and another nasty letter and then some some of my people, my friends are going to come and they're going to put you in a cage or or we could do something like that, but that's all coercion, violence, like nasty, horrible stuff. And it, 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 it occurs to me that that's not how we ought to treat each other. So so we couldn't do it that way. And then it makes me think, well, well this whole universal income thing, where is the money coming from? If it's coming from donors, from from willing, voluntary donations, then, oh my gosh, I'm all about it. That sounds wonderful. Um, I, I might even, you know, if I have some extra money, I might toss it in. On the other hand, I do kind of like the idea of of money that goes out of my pocket ending up in, in the, the hands or the pocket uh, uh, the, of a person who has worked for it and earned it. Um, So I guess that's what I would choose to do with my money. I I don't know that I would donate to it. I might, I might not. But but I guess if that's the argument is is that there's just going to be a big request that goes out, a GoFundMe type campaign, please donate, then I I think I'm all for that. I suggest that 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 would be a good way to do it. And while I might not donate, um, certainly that would be the peaceful, good way to do it. And then I think about, well, what if I was a nasty, um, Hitler's name is overused, but uh, um, a Stalin or a Mao or, or a uh, Pol Pot, like some just really nasty, horrible person. What would I do then? And then I think, well, I would steal. And whether it's through taxation or robbery or mobs or, or whatever I want to call it, I would 
take the stuff that belongs to one person, in the old example, Bob, I would take Bob's, or actually it was Bill, I'll take Bill's stuff, I'll steal it from Bill to give it to Bob. But no, I'm, I'm not going to do that. That's theft and, and, and stealing is wrong. Always. It's always wrong. Even if I plan to do something really cool with it, it's still wrong. So, so it just doesn't seem to me that there's a way this universal income thing could work without being violent, without stealing. Um, and, and yeah, if you want to pay extortion or what it, taxes, whatever you want to call it, then I guess it's not extortion. If you want to pay it, then it's just a voluntary donation. And I think, I think a GoFundMe would probably just solve it. There could be a new one every week and, and could figure out how to, how y'all are going to distribute it. And I think that might solve it. You know, a concern I have is that we've been talking about money for food so far. I'm going to, I'm going to broach a difficult subject and, and I think it kind of it ties in, and you can say, oh, well, you're just trying for the whole shock effect. And, and yeah, I kind of am, but I think sometimes when we think about extreme cases, uh, edge cases is what uh, the philosopher Patrick Smith calls them, edge cases. Uh, it, when we think about those, it kind of brings out some truths, and it makes us think, oh, wait, is this really, if we take it to an extreme, is it still true? And I, I think it's a useful way to think about things. So... Let's just say that, that there's a, a single middle-aged fat guy and he hasn't had sex in a long time and he enjoys sex and he really wants to have it with, with you know somebody else, not just himself. And he really wants that thing. And I think we could find a lot of psychologists that would say it's healthy for a person's brain to have sexual intercourse. And we could find a lot of doctors that say, hey, it's good for the body. To have sex. Well, this poor fat middle-aged dude has a horrible personality. He's not, you know, he hasn't had luck. He's, he's tried for many, 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 many years, and it, it's not happening. And and he can't just go out and, and peacefully get this thing that experts agree would be good for him, and that is sexual intercourse. So so what what do we do then? Can we kind of transfer over that universal income thing to other things other than money to maybe things that are more important that that feeling of love of passion can we transfer it over to that well then then how would we go about procuring a, a sexual partner for this for this man um should we let him choose what if he's a bigot and he only wants it to be a woman should we let him make a bigoted choice like that? Or should we, the the community, decide who might be best for him? And maybe it's a man, maybe it's a woman, maybe it's a, a, a non-binary person. But should he really be the one who should get to choose? I don't know. It's a question we should think about. And then when we think about this sexual partner for him, you know, I, I kind of think about like taxes. You know, maybe there's some rich dude like Bill Gates, I don't want to pay any taxes. I don't want to pay my fair share. Well, what if we pick some gal, let's say, for, for this, this dude, and we're going to, we tell her, hey, you need to go have sex with him because he, he needs that. And she says, no, I don't want to. She's acting just like Bill Gates. She's like, no, I've got this thing that I could give, but I'm not going to. I'm greedy. I'm selfish. Or, you know, whatever they say to themselves, people like her and, and Bill Gates then what is it that the commune should do? Should we force the rich person or, or the woman that's got the, the, the goodies parts to, to go and, and give those things that they have, that they value, that they don't want to give? Should we force them to give those to somebody else? Or should we respect their personal property, whether it's their body or their money or their food or or whatever else it is that is theirs, should we respect their right to it? What if they're being greedy? What do we do about it? Now, this is an edge case, isn't it? This is kind of maybe a, I would say it's a silly example, but this has been, what I'm talking about now has been seriously proposed by people. Uh, and that's scary. It, and, and the idea that we would take people's money and give it to people who aren't working, who are, who, who you know, whether they're in good health or not, like, 
is somebody's earned their money through a capitalist system, a socialist system, whatever it is, if they haven't used violence and they, they have a pile of coins, oh my gosh, we would use violence to take those coins from them? Not if we're good people, we wouldn't. Not if we're good people. I, I, I know I wouldn't. Would you? Thank you.